the more this project goes on, the more confused I'm starting to get. The Minimal Phone, the world's first e-ink QWERTY device. At least that's what the project is promising. If you haven't seen my first video on the Minimal Phone, I would suggest taking a look at it so that way you'll understand how these specifications and updates will impact the project itself. Now on May 10th, the Minimal Company released updates regarding the Minimal Phone. These updates and enhancements have greatly changed the device itself. If you take a look at the previous design compared to the new design, you'll notice one key big change. This is the screen size. Now previously the screen was 3.5 inches and now it is 4.3 inches. In the update, they specified this is better for readability as well as app integration. In my previous video, I mentioned it would be difficult to integrate apps that aren't developed for a 3.5 inch display. And I'm not surprised that they had to change the screen dimensions. But I noticed a lot of people in the comments regarding the screen changes were not happy with the screen upgrade. Is it really an upgrade? It depends who you're asking. This is supposed to be a minimal phone. So therefore you're supposed to be using it for minimal time. The larger the screen, probably the more enticing the device is to read or consume content. So it's understandable that certain people may not be happy with this change, but there are also positive comments indicating that the screen size is a great improvement on the design. Another key change is the memory. So they upgraded the RAM from six gigabytes to eight, which is quite important if you want to open and close apps and multitask across those apps. They also upgraded the processor. So the processor will be a G99 rather than a G88. This again will improve the speed and the productivity on the device. I understand these upgrades, especially for the processor, they're promising that the processor will have security updates and will contribute to the longevity of the device up until 2030 and beyond. I have a question mark on this one. This depends on the software updates and the software itself, which we haven't seen or any demonstrations regarding the software. Five years or six years, depending on when the device is released, is a long time to promise for security updates and usability for devices. Even flagships such as Google and Apple generally promise six years. So for a startup to be able to promise this much longevity into the future, I have a question mark on it. That's all I'm saying. Now, another upgrade or downgrade, depending on how you're looking at it, is the battery size. With the size changes and the processor upgrades, they decided to reduce the size of the battery from a 4,000 milliamp battery to a 3,000 milliamp battery. This helps change the thickness of the device. So now the device is thinner, even though the device now measures longer and wider than before. The keyboard is also upgraded to larger size, so that way it's easier for you to type on, supposedly, according to the impact. And all of these changes have changed the overall appearance of the device. So in comparison, I would compare this from a BlackBerry Classic Q20 to now a BlackBerry Key1, for example. So you'll have a longer looking device and a completely different user case device, in my opinion. For example, I found the original design to be more pocketable, um, perhaps more minimal overall. The newer device is definitely not for a minimalist user. It's probably for somebody who wants to be quite productive. And again, maybe use the device less for content consumption, but still want to be a powerhouse when completing emails, documents, and things like this. So again, I just have the question, who is this device marketed towards? I know it's called the minimal phone, but the more and more changes I'm seeing is making it less of a minimal phone and more of just an e-ink device with a QWERTY physical keyboard. Another big update is the removal of the front facing camera. Now this was mentioned on May 10th and keep this in mind because we're gonna come back to it. Another key update on May 10th was the timeline found at the bottom of the updates. This timeline set a week-by-week -week update on what will be done in the process 
of the design. Plus, I'm guessing more for the R&D and the pre-production phases. The design is supposed to be completed, according to this timeline, by the first week or week two of May. We're now at May 17th, and it doesn't look like the design is more or less confirmed. We're going to get to why. So on May 11th, they had released another update regarding polls on their Discord. So these polls are community-based polls, especially for those who are backing the project to decide on elements and specifications as well as colors for the potential devices. I find that these polls are important and probably should have been implemented sooner in the process. So again, we're still in the design process of this device. It's not in production. Now the update for May 15th, which came out a couple days ago as I'm recording this video, specifies that there will be two versions of the device released. There will be a front-facing camera version and a non-front-facing camera version. So within a few days from May 10th to May 15th, they were able to solve the problem of the front-facing camera. On May 10th, they had specified they had removed the camera due to the length of the device, so they didn't want to increase the length of the device. But on May 15th, they were able to offer the option to have the front-facing camera if the users had wanted it. So within five days, they were able to solve the issue of not having a longer device with the front-facing camera, which is pretty incredible. Again, I'm not understanding why creating two versions of the device, probably there's a price difference of integrating the camera or not. But I think for production purposes, having more than one device with more options or colors or things like this could greatly impact the production of the device and probably push back the release date. Now, today, as I'm recording this video, there is another update. So May 17th, the update states that there are three colors, Onyx Black, Fusion, as well as Pebble. Now, Pebble is an all-white device from what I can see. I'm going to specify that I am colorblind, so these colors are quite similar to me. Um, but the bezels are white, the device is white, and a lot of people like this look of the device. For example, if you're looking at the Onyx Books Palma, they have a black variant and a white variant. People are very divided on this, and depending on how you use your device, is depending on the color you usually choose. As somebody who has visual impairments, I'm going to choose something usually with a darker bezel, so that way I can use the dark mode on my device to be able to see the text in contrast. But a lot of people who read on e-ink devices prefer a white background with black text. So the lighter device would appeal to those users. So now they have three different colors. Those who have backed the device since the beginning will get the Onyx Black version or the Founders Edition. Um, they also specified that that Founders Edition would come with additional features to be released later on. The other color variants will be a choice for those new to backing the project. I'm not sure if those who have already backed the project can change their color if they wish. I'm sure this is probably a possibility and you should probably contact the support team if you wish to change your color variant. Now, with that being said, um, there are a lot of options now for this project. You have the front-facing camera, the not front-facing camera, plus the color variants. So when this device goes to production, that will be a lot for the manufacturer to take into consideration when receiving orders and fulfilling those orders. The timeline itself on May 10th indicates a lot of testing, especially for the printed circuit board options, so to see where the components will lie within the device itself. There is a lot of testing in R&D that will need to go into that and deciding on which components will go where and how those components will interact with each other. And it looks to the timeline is set out until the end of September for this process alone. I don't know what the time will look like afterwards. Um, it looks like the timeline is a bit delayed with all of these design changes. And on the project page itself, when you go on Indiegogo, it says that they have a working demo for the product team. Um, I'm sure this is the older variant of the design and they'll have to make a newer variant for the product team to be able to test and show and demo the software and things like this. Um, we don't have, of course, a new version of the different colors or things like this because this has just been announced. Even the website itself for the minimal phone company has not been updated with the new design specs and renders and things like this. Um, but 
on the website itself, I did notice some things that had changed. If you go up to the top right hand corner and select pre-order, you're redirected to their personal e-commerce site before you're redirected to the Indiegogo project. And so now when you go and select the pre-order on their website, you are redirected again to a checkout, which indicates that the device is 399 US dollars. It's not very transparent on the website because you do have the old device and the old specifications. So if somebody were to stumble upon this website today, they will be purchasing a device that no longer exists. Um, it's the old format, it's the old size, the old battery. And um, I think they need to change the website as soon as possible before having the option to buy the device as is, um, or a little indication saying, look, the device is still in the design phase and may change. We will notify you with those changes and you can decide to continue on with your purchase or decide to get reimbursed. So a little bit more clarification for potential consumers going through the website would be great. As far as what I can see in the community itself, um, there has been a lot of commentary on Reddit, as well as the comments themselves within the Indiegogo project page. So a lot of people are very polarized on these changes for the device itself. Again, I think it's because there's not enough clarification on who this device is targeted to. It's quite broad. Um, it started out as a minimal phone with a small design and compact features to be able to put it in your pocket. And now it has expanded, understandably, to be able to be compatible with a lot of applications. And um, I have a lot of questions on, again, who they're targeting this device for. As somebody who is a digital minimalist, I like to be on my devices as little as possible. And I find that these changes may make someone like myself more addicted to my device and still use it for scrolling and content consumption because it will have a larger screen. And again, be more compatible with those social media apps that maybe users are trying to reduce their time on. For those of you who are backing the project, I'd like to hear your opinions on the new changes and enhancements of this device. And those of you who are thinking about maybe backing or buying the product when it is officially released, what do you think about these changes? Is it still a device that you would purchase? Um, are you still waiting for future updates to see if the design changes? Um, the more and more the project goes for myself, I'm more and more confused. I still like the QWERTY keyboard factor. I'm not sure I'm on board with the larger screen factor. I really like the 3.5... Uh, inch display, but I understand that as far as Google Apps are concerned, you would need to, to adapt to that. Um, I have a lot of questions about the operating system. Um, they upgraded the RAM and the processor. Again, yes, to make the apps open and close faster, but this is an e-ink display, so I'm not looking to game on it or to consume video content. So yeah, I just have a lot of questions of why those things needed to be updated. And yeah, I would really like to see a demo of the operating system itself and how it works with the Google Play Store and the battery life itself. So going down from 4,000 to 3,000 is a big change. With e-ink, you're using a lot less battery than a traditional OLED or LCD screen. So I think the battery life would still be good, but it depends on how it's optimized with the OS. And yeah, there's a lot of questions around this device. And uh what are your opinions? In any case, thanks for watching and see you soon.